Hi, I'm Seamless, and this is the eighth part of the Track from Scratch modular modular electro. And this is what we got so far, playing in three, two, one. Yay. Somebody in the chat asks, Steven, are you enjoying this track so far? And the answer is yes. And then later he says, meh, he's ignoring us because he's an impatient douche. Someone else says, hey, see Lazar, good to see you, man. Hope all is good. And it all is pretty great. Let's do it. Let's see. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's future hardstyle. That's pretty good. Future hardstyle is just 80s electro. That works. Um... All right, so last time I kind of resigned to the fact that these courts suck, and I really want to do something about it, and, like, I don't really know what to do about that yet. And the other things I want to do is I want to add kind of, like, on top stuff, like, melodically to the drop, just because, like, I like the, like the basses and that kind of thing. It's just, like, the basses are also perfectly mono, which normally I wouldn't care about, well, now normally I would I would care. I would definitely care. Um. Oh boy, this is like uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that I could do. It's just like I don't really necessarily. I'm not sure about how to proceed, about especially about the chord business. Uh, part of me just wants to not have chords at all, but uh, then that's that's that goes into a territory where kind of track that I'm just not not familiar enough to do, just to kind of like. <laughs> Although I just had an idea about these guys, because this this part is a loop that I did a lot of times, which means I could actually probably just like multi-track it. Like maybe. So I gotta find a copy of that same part. These same parts. There's, there's those. And just for hells, let's see what happens when I do this. Yeah, it's a little too imbalanced, personally. Right, let's not worry about that yet. I mean, the progression is still just the same basic kind of like one, three, seven thing with a four in there. Uh, somebody was mentioning ARPS, and I was thinking about doing some kind of like leady thing, like sort of in the background. I, I was listening, listening to a lot of like uh, Feed Me stuff for inspiration for this, and that seems like a thing to do. So let's do that. Let's enter into the melodic zone. <laughs> do, 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 do. I don't know why that was selected way over there. I guess I actually didn't really need this to kind of be there. So let's uh, let's do some stuff. All right, so let's make sure all this is even on. Okay, it's doing something. That's good to know. Erf. All right. This was the chord that the the chord amplifier I suppose I tried to do earlier. Let's see. I think what I might do. Okay, I have a couple of ideas because I actually I know what I know what I would do if I had the digital control of some things, but I don't have a lot of the options that I do digitally. So I gotta think of some I gotta think of some stuff to do here and I have a plan. Have a plan. 
Have a plan, 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 plan. Glitch hop modular. Oh boy, that'd be that'd be something, wouldn't it? I'm actually gonna keep this here. We're gonna go and put it put it here. The weird portamento nature actually might work out in our advantage. I'm still gonna need the gate control. Right, let's put the final. Actually, you know something? It might make more sense to use this guy for this. The DPO is nice, but it's very harsh. And what I want to do right now is not all that harsh. Alright, so I have a bunch of, like, the 7 and 8 are doing this, and I don't have any envelopes. Although it seems to think I have an envelope. Is that what 3 and 4 is doing? Send 1, 3, and 4. Ah, that's this guy. That's right. So, <clears throat> output. 1 is 2, gate 3. So four is actually still just a regular envelope. So one envelope one is output three. So let's do. Actually, I don't want any attack. I do want the K now. And let's put that on something interesting like order. So much. Let me stick it into the delay. Uh, give me a cable that's not a mile long. Where's all the where's all the weird short ones? There's a lot of weird short ones there there it is okay actually this is different so I need to um needs to go in here out the gate and then in the second out and that just goes Okay, apparently I'm not doing this right. Um... There we go. Kinda. Uh, put so I do FM, I suppose. So it's a modulation, so I can do this, do some of that.
Lol, never mind about that. All right, um, but I will take this. Actually, I put it into CV2 of this dude. And hold on, where's he up to this dude? Take you. Low pass, high pass, out. Final. I'll go in. Actually, I just realized I don't even know this is uh, pitched right. I got to tune the oscillator. Uh, and to do that, I'm actually just going to take the out straight and do this number two. It might be stupidly loud. How loud is that? Stupidly loud. All right, well, um... I don't, want, I don't really want to fuck with this stuff though. So hold on, let me, let me do. Actually, I'll keep the gate in there. Green and purple, in that order. Uh, actually, yeah, and then. Uh, green's got to go in here, actually. And then. There it is. Let's try it again, this time without FM. Put this back the way it's supposed to be. So now actually uh, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try and tempo sync the uh, delay because it's like totally not right now. Although th does that matter? Let's find out if that matters because it could sound neat. Just doing what it's doing. Although uh, it will just keep doing that forever. This is a new pattern, right? Well, it is now. Uh, what key, what key am I in? E. Uh, 
And we'll of course just keep doing that forever. That might be kind of a cool background sound though. To have just like that fucking delay going. Pretty sure that would sound pretty dumb doing doing on the drop. Like just just that, but um, I might be able to do some kind of neat like filtered version of it. Let's just record it just so that we have it, which I could do with Edison now because I turned the PPQ off. Oh my god! Let me just make sure I actually did do that just before I destroy everything. Yep, ninety six. Don't forget to make it sound sweeter. <laughs> Alright, actually, this is what's going to happen. Because I, I really want to capture that um, <clears throat> delay. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just put the pattern just kind of here. Hmm, different stages of that sound pretty cool. Let's just do this. Ah, that's already been recording. That's hilarious. Just gonna let that go. What is that funkiness up there? You see that? Must not be loud enough because I can't really hear it. So the whole point of doing that was to double track the ARP, but then to have the, uh, well, actually before we do that, what the hell frequency is that? That's 12,000 Hertz. That's a lot. That's a lot of Hertz. Oh, I can hear that a lot. Man, look at that go. Well, at least it's consistent because I can just EQ it out of there.
wow, there's a whole bunch of crap happening in there that I didn't hear the first time around. <laughs> Holy crap. That's from the ring mod on um on this from this oscillator. Cause I engaged this, which you probably can't tell. Well that says timbre. Okay, so that's the timbre. Anyway, it is it is FM essentially, so it's it's just, it's not in the right it's not pitched properly. Or maybe it I mean it's not pitched properly, but it might be just pitched awesomely. Can't do that. It's interesting when I when I stereoize it, it's not that that frequency phases out like almost entirely. That's kind of freaky. Just because. So the whole point of doing that was that I wanted to have something to put in the drop, but like I don't know that I can put this in the drop and have it just work. I mean, I guess if it's quiet enough, but it's, I mean, the pattern and just the sound, like, uh, I think I actually, I, I didn't really want something to be like, like, RP like that. I wanted it to be more individual, but well, let's see, just, just for confirmation, let's just see what this sounds like. Stupid as hell. All right, that's what I thought. I can might maybe use this for like the intro or something, but that's not gonna work for what I want. However, I do have another idea. I actually need to make it unique. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this with the uh, piano roll. Just gonna put it like over here so you guys can see what I'm doing with it. I mean, you can't largely see it, but just because, just to make more sure. Yeah, isn't that better? All right. So actually, I'm gonna treat this more melodically and not less like an like an ARP. Okay, I actually wasn't planning on doing that initially in terms of being that long, but I wonder what kind of weird shit I guess I could do with it being a five bar pattern. Like having to do one of these. See, this I can actually test. You know, what, you know what I really should have done? Just do like a, instead of doing the chords, I can actually do kind of what I was doing with the chords, but do it faster. Do like. Because now I have 
that the delay doing it for me, essentially. Is it clipping? It is clipping actually because um, the uh, the channel with the with the analog stuff is actually uh, going out independently of the master. This is so that I can hear what the raw um, synth sounds like but without the processing. That's what that's what that's for. Perhaps. So actually, I could probably screw up the delay a little bit to. That's what that does. So if you're not totally sure what's happening with this, this module here, this is time and this is feedback. There's various other parameters to try and like mess with it. Like this is the overall how long it is. Like the 4096 setting is half as long as the 880, uh, 8129 setting. And then we have the short and long versions of both of those. And right now I'm doing short of 4096. So it's pretty, you know, short. And the feedback. Cool thing is if you screw around with the time while it's playing. It does that, which is fun. If you're curious what this module is, this is the Pittsburgh Analog Replicator. That's what it's called. It's actually pretty new. Um, and I was interested in it when I saw it. So what was the progression? It was, um, oh, we're done with the part. Shut up, timer. It's like we have uh, E, D, E, uh, G, D, E. G, G, D, okay. Hmm. 
That happens pretty often. Pretty much every time, isn't it? It's just, then they go straight to G. Is it G and then D? Alright, so. So that's the pattern. And like the intermediate in between it will have the crazy feedback. Half as long. Is that so difficult? I guess it is. Come on. And, okay. Somebody asked in the chat when the next stream is, and actually, it's not going to be next week, because next week I'm in Holland. Uh, to that end, I don't believe I'll be streaming. I may attempt to do something, but I won't be able to do this, because I won't have any of my stuff in Holland. <laughs> so, there's that. And I need to just snap. Netherlands, whatever, you know where I'm going. <clears throat> okay. Uh, how loud is this? Not loud, okay. Just making sure I haven't been clipping this the entire time. One of these days, I'm going to edit one of my videos to have, like, old, like, kung fu action sound effects. It's like, whenever I do anything, it'll be like, pow, bam, slap. It'd be hilarious. This is the art point, right? Yeah. Modular tracks in the future, probably. Now let's try this for real. And the derp. And see if it works.
Hmm. Let's try that without the chords. I'm a little dumb, but let's try that with compression. I actually sort of made the chord sound pretty okay if they had the arp like on it. Just like just just fucking pump it. Let's try this with the, uh, not with the full chords, but with just the top end of the chord. Cherubad. With the rest of the chord. I actually kind of want to change the beat up, beat up a bit on some of these. That's a bit much to do it like that, but you can always do it just slightly different for this one hit. Hold on, am I hitting the snare on this? No, I'm not. The hell beat is that? So that's that one and that one. So that one. <laughs> Should I run now? I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna be weird about it. Bam, bam, and then the other guy, same deal, but opposite. Bam, bam. Oh shit, I did it on the main beat. Whoops. Might be best left like a hat or something, but yeah, whatever, I'll just turn it down if it gets too much. Back in the pocket. Of... Uh, actually, let's not do all the way. Because the song doesn't have a lot of stereo to it, so like adding a huge amount of stereo makes it like, oh god!
that's kind of a useful perk of having done this in audio is that like I don't have to worry about automating tails. I can just cut it. Love doing a Q&A stream. Eh, maybe. I mean, I've done Q&A videos a lot and they're mostly the same questions that happen every time. So it's less, less interesting for me to do that. And people listing a bunch of people that I that be the one to collaborate with. And like, I'm not against collaborations. I'm just really bad at them. I'm like super bad at keeping up with them and like doing them and for real. Just that's ah, so terrible. How like bad I am working with other people. It's not, it's not that I don't want to. It's just that like I don't want to like put them in a position where like oh yeah I'm gonna collaborate and then like I just don't and they just feel bad and now they don't want to do anything with me ever again. <laughs> so yeah. this um i don't really want to i suppose i could always do this is it this one doing it Must have been. Okay, well, that's that. If you have no idea what was happening there, there was a click happening between these two samples, and that's because I cut them, and they weren't cut at the zero crossing, which is to say that they were there was still amplitude in them when they cut, and it causes a perfect snap. And there's an option up here called zero cross, where when you make a cut, it will only make the cut where there is zero crossing, regardless if I try to make a cut here. I guess there's a zero crossing there. Whereas, like, if I try to cut someplace, it's, like, it's, not, it's not at a zero crossing. It'll move to the closest zero crossing. And that's what I just did there to make sure that there was a zero crossing. Alternatively, I could have also engaged uh, crossfading, but um, that would have changed every single clip that had this clip in it, which is more than just that clip. So there's that. Man, I stopped the part and I forgot the part stopped. I'm an idiot. My God. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> this has been a very long part and that's good for you guys, I guess. Anyway, for those of you watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all the good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.